Sure. Hi everybody, this is Nathan. I'm going to be doing a short video on how to write one of the core sections of the account plan. So how do you execute on one of the core sections? That's really the strategy part of the account plan. So as you know, we launched the level ones about a month ago, um, and now we'll be launching the level twos, and a lot of more people will be seeing this. So I thought that this video would help, as I know a lot of people are struggling on how to put this specific section together. So this is the same as what Dave Holt gave us in the training, but hopefully I'll go through a couple of examples, and it'll be become a little bit easier for you. So the real core section of the account plan, if you look at the template, really is the key insights, the smart objectives, and the tactics. This is the actual story that you're trying to tell about the account. This is where you're taking it forward. This is where the strategy of the account really comes, the relationship really comes to life. So if you think about the key insights, after you've written the first section in the account plan template, you're, you're, you're looking at the company's overview and things from their, their annual report, you've met with the company, you've put all that information, that's just information, that's just data. The insights are different. The insight is something that you know is valuable for EDC. So if you think about it, it's not just a data point, it's not just some kind of information, and it needs to come down to something that is valuable for EDC. Think about it that way. If you have trouble writing the key insights, you can also try to bucket them into, into different sections. So you can have like a financing or revenue insight, you can have a mandate insight, you can have a, a corporate responsibility insight, or you can have a relationship insight. So I'm just giving you some ideas to make it a little bit easier. So once you've written the key insight, then it goes down into the smart objective. So this is linear. The, the key ins insight will feed into the smart objective. Remember, the smart objective is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. So you have to make it as, as smart as possible using those, those terms. And then the SMART objective obviously feeds down into the tactics, so as I said, you'd have your first key insight, then you'd have your SMART objective under that insight, and then you may have three or four different tactics that would feed into them. So to make this easier, I'm going to actually give you a quick example. So a, a really easy insight, and one that would be pertinent for a lot of the accounts, would actually be a, a financing insight. So when you've looked, through the, looked at the company, you've met with them, you've gone through their annual report, and all that information that you've put um, in, the, in the company overview, then you think, okay, so what's insightful, what's valuable for EDC? Well, maybe they have a $2 billion financing need, and maybe in their annual report or speaking with a company, you know that they borrow from ECAs, they go to the bond market, and they do uh, commercial loans. So, so that would be the insight. The insight would be that you know that the company needs to raise funds and you know that EDC could match that. So that would be the insight, that would be what, what would be valuable for EDC because it's actually something that, that, that is insightful about the company. So then how would that specific financing insight become a SMART goal? Well then you would get very specific. So then you would say EDC would like to lend 200 million to company X um, by December 2019. So you've gotten very specific on exactly what you're going to do. That would be the SMART objective. It's, it's very specific. And then going into that, well, the tactics. Well, what, be able to do that, what would you actually need to do? So one tactic could be, I need to meet with the treasury team of that, uh, of company X, and I need to figure out what's really valuable for them in a loan. So a meeting with the team that you could actually then feed into to corporate lending. So the tactic could be meet with uh, the treasury team or, or discover what's the valuable points for that company um, for a new financing, for a financing facility. So that would be the tactic. So it would be one, one, one. It all goes linear. The financing insight, the smart objective, uh, financing insight, financing objective, and then the tactic that would follow that as well. So then the owner would probably be the, 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 the yourself would be the account lead. The due date, well, you would put that, for that particular one, you would be looking to put maybe two months out and say, well, I need to meet with the treasury team in the next two months. And then the status is just if it's ongoing or if it's, or if it's finalized. So that's, that's fairly easy and it just tracks how we're doing. And then the dependency is just all the other teams. So you remember the best practice of doing all of this is bringing in your virtual team. Even if you chatted with them uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, to kick off the meeting and to be able to write and do all this properly, you really need to bring in the virtual team. And this is where you would put who's the dependency. Who else would be responsible? Corporate lending probably, but maybe legal, maybe some other uh, 
uh, some other people on the virtual team. So hopefully that example helped. Uh, if you do have any questions, please reach out to, uh, to Sarah or myself. Uh, we'd be happy to sit down with you. This is the real important stuff when we're looking at the account plan. This, all the other stuff is more information and we've been good at doing that, but this is the strategy. This is what we've done when, when RBS has put strategy before, before transaction. This is the strategy. So I hope you like the video. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is called the uh, chalkboard. Um, and um, thank you very much.